You know what it is, folks. Welcome back to episode three of Breaking Pinehurst, where three golfers of varying handicaps take on Pinehurst number two from the U.S. Open tees. Not even the tips, folks. We're back of the back. Anyway, we made the turn, and we're heading into the back nine now. Chris Triplett is an eight handicap, attempting to break 90. Cousin Mark is an 18.8 handicap. And can we just say 19 here? I mean, come on. Anyway, Mark is also trying to break 90. And Liz plays off of scratch. And she's attempting to break 80. Without further ado, let's roll that flyover. Tenth hole. First hole on the back nine. The second and final par five on the course. That's right, folks. There's only two par fives. This one is wide and fast running. Even for most pros, it is not a two-shot hole. Dang. It features a typical Pinehurst turtleback green. Later in the episode, we're going to realize that it's called a tease green. Wait for it. Great start line. Sometimes you got to just find the good. Liz on the tee. Driver, I mean, it's got to be the most comfortable club in her bag. As I say that, she's going to miss the fairway. What the hell is wrong with me? It's the curse of the announcer. I do like the finish, though. The one-legged finish reminded me kind of... Um, any any of y'all been to Isle of Man? Nice shirt, Chris. Thank you. It looks good today. I like that. Yeah, he does. He came, like, he came ready to go. I'm a big fan of those shoes, too. Thank you. Personally. Chris is Matt Wolf. Oh, God. Chris, still struggling. When you're quick, that's what happens. Truthfully, this place is really hard. Like, I had no idea. Like, the closer you get to the greens, the more fear inciting it is. Overall, I feel pretty good. Back nine, we're gonna shoot lower. Gotta feel for the course, gotta feel for the green, so let's get after it. Give Chris a break, all right? The club twirls are his, he likes to do it. So let him do it. I, I thought it was awesome when we were playing. I mean, you know, look, all of us talk about manifesting greatness. Well, maybe it starts with just club twirls. I know a seven wood's a good play. Nice ball. What a beauty. I played as bad as I've played in years on the front nine, but it was awesome. It's a daunting distance, so that's kind of expected. But we're gonna turn things around on the back. I just wanna start hitting the ball better, really. My God, look at that hole. I feel like I'm not operating my body when I'm hitting some of these shots. Yeah. Like Michelle Wee, when she won here at under par yeah. for four days, yeah. I have no idea. Chris, five iron. Nice little layup here from 317. Usually these are pure as hell. You know what I mean? Why it, Why is that? It's a little bit turned over a lot. Whatever, whatever though, who cares? You know what I mean? Just stay out of that sandy stuff. That sandy stuff is kind of like um, lava, except maybe it's more like the fairways lava in this case. <laughs> this is a tough shot. If she pulls this off, can you just go into the comments and try athlete? She's basically relearning golf. It's like she got into a car accident, has amnesia, and now she her head is a tree. Oh my God, it's so pure. It's so pure. Guys, that's better than most of us from the tee box. 234 yard hybrid. Are any of you hungry for some amazing golf? Well, good, because Liz is serving it up. Nothing like seven wood, seven wood. What happened? <laughs> this is a long hole, folks. This is one of the holes where you're just kind of like, where am I? What's, what is happening? This is sort of like in the zombie movie when the main characters are like, this might be it. Like, we might we might not make it through this movie, you know? But invariably, you watch the rest of the movie to see if they die. So the question here is, is Chris gonna die? <laughs> I got a putt for me. That was a great idea you had. 
to hit that. You know what? Oh, look That's at That's my it. caddy. That was me. That was you. That I agree. That was me. That was. I didn't think that the distance would bother me as much as it has. It's just, it's, you don't realize how much that plays into your game, especially if you're not a long hitter. If you're not a long hitter, you're dead out here. Real fluffy sand. Chris from the bunker. I mean, for that to go anywhere but the bunker is almost ridiculous. I mean, that's like bunker extra. Bunker with friends. The sand around here is intense. Liz. Sit. I feel like if Mark went on a like four day trip to Scotland, he would just never come back. And he would just be like, he would just become a Scottish resident. I don't know what his job would be, but he wouldn't even care because it would just be, he'd probably get a job like at the old course. All right, Chris, trying to drop a bogey. Aren't we all at Pinehurst number two? Oh, it looks so good. God, oh man. Mark, it's in, nah, not in. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the worst. When your heart starts to pave the way, make the bed for love on the course, but it does not come to pass. Liz, here's the thing. That was, technically speaking, that was a bogey, but I'm just going to mark that down as a birdie. <laughs> Is that okay? We don't do that over here in the breaking series. All right, so with a double, a triple, and a single, the story continues. What would I shoot at Pinehurst? One of these players may be answering that question for you. A long par four, 490 yards in fact, with a semi-blind tee shot. All you kind of see on the tee is a sand patch. Yikes. You don't want to miss left on the approach, the bunker down there, and on the right, you'll have a pretty gettable up and down. How about the flyovers? When Simon shoots the flyovers, my guy gets into a zone. is in the middle of getting broken here. I'm pissed, dude. I'm tired of like, thank you. I'm just like tired of getting it exactly the way I wanted to. But this is what I'm breaking. I'm not crazy, you're crazy. The question of this series is, do you get angry? <laughs> do you let it get under your skin? Mark, <laughs> next tee box. Got it? Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> it's not meant to be a slaughter fest, folks. Sometimes it just is that way, though. All right, Chris, let's get off the box. Yeah. I'm Take it. I didn't see where that went. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's a chance you might not find it if you want to hit a provisional. Yeah. You have a blocking list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we gotta hit it for vision. It went way left. Yeah, stay there. Just stay there. We got it. Don't lose it. It has my dog's name on it. Yeah. Pressure. Yeah. Do it for Enzo. Come on. Very similar to the one that just hit. That's my curse. I'll hit a provisional. Same exact shot. I'm back on the tee box. I mean, let's do it. Try a three wood instead of a driver, right? Not his tee shot. Looking good. Liz, if I lost your ball, oh, sorry to you and your dog. Renzo, I think you said his name was. I see one straight. Okay. Oh, Enzo. I got it, Liz. Never mind. I didn't lose your ball. I've been doing no glove recently, and um, I'm a fan. I, I like, I really like it. 
I don't know. It makes me swing smoother. I think also I like it because it's so uncomfortable to me. Putting the glove on used to be one of my favorite parts of the game. And now that I've taken that away from myself, I feel more free, actually. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what they say when you lose everything, that's when you find something? Isn't that in those movies? When all is lost, where do you find the will and the courage to continue? That was Chris's seven iron out of the bunker. He slipped on that one. Liz Breed, that hybrid is hot, girl. We got two, three, seven. She loves it. Imagine being Liz. Can we just step back and imagine what it's like to be Liz Breed? I don't, I don't think I'm putting with the intent to make a putt. Right the, the, I agree 100%. And I think that's going to change right now. Right now. So if you're going at the green, if you're looking at a 190 carry. I have realistic expectations, but very high hopes, which probably would give you some insight into why Ace Cam is even a thing. I mean, the whole idea is you record every par three just in case you get a hole in one. I mean, how about set yourself up for f***ing super big disappointment? What's the highest score you ever seen out here? That somebody actually kept track. That somebody actually kept track? Yeah. I was going to say, I've had a couple guys that, you know, it's fourth time ever playing golf in round number two. Yeah. I'd say it. The one that really sticks out is I had a 183. 183? Mm-hmm. 183. Yep. All right, that's my new target. Talk Under about 183. Long, talk about a long day. Yeah. <laughs> you do get the feeling like Mark is just about to burst into laughter. 52 degree wedge. Chris is in the middle of like, um, he's being interrogated. I literally go to the coffee. We were playing snooker or craps. I come back, Chris is in the back room with some big guys wearing pinky rings. Chris, I don't understand why you get yourself in this much trouble. I do understand though. Oh, I do. The thing about that pine straw is that it's like hitting a golf ball on top of a bowl filled with water and a thin layer of saran wrap. Does that make any sense? It's basically like you have to hit it perfectly or you suck. That's hard, it's hard to do it. I feel like you could probably, on this course, just grab a pitching wedge and maybe score better with just pitching wedge from the tee box the whole way around. Thank you. There was some fire in the back. Listen, you give me one tip and all of a sudden I get applause. You're coming with me. You're coming back to Ohio. Don't give me. 60 with a tip from Hunter to keep a little more weight on my front foot. So I did it and I did it like a pro. <laughs> You got all the room right. Right. You know, as long as we just get it there in two putt, we walk that's away it. with a five. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Liz, nine iron on the way. It's a chip. Oh, it's a putt. No, it's a, what is it? I got faked out. I was expect. I don't know what I was looking for here. That came up just a tad short. She wanted more out of that. She had high hopes for that shot. As, I mean, Thanks, do we all not relate to I'm that? I'm off twice. Still have a chance at a bogey here, so I'll take it. Finally made it. Nah. Pin high-ish. So let's finish this off with the putt. Let's get out of here. On to the next. Let's get out of here. That is... Yeah, you don't... You don't really want to be on the hole where you're looking at a five. What is a five over? Amazing. Amazing. Now he doesn't want to leave. I was like the first one. Hey, I did it for Enzo. Enzo. We love you, Enzo. Let's go. My boy! You did it for Enzo! My boy! I'm so cute. Yeah, no, no. We did it for Enzo. I had uh Liz's ball. Let me see that. This is your ball now. Enzo! I got you, buddy. Liz's dog just wondering why the TV is calling his name. Oh. Big par putt here for Liz. Is she putting it to make it? She is. Drops a par on him. That was 
That was incredible. That was for Enzo. Yeah, that's a like prime example. That was like one of the best up and downs I've had in the last decade. All you have to do is hit perfect golf shots. Perfect. That's it. I have so much respect for pros. I don't know how you got to do this, but it's a lot of fun though. And if you can do this at Pinehurst, you can play anywhere. Par on the board from Liz, double from Mark, and a kept the two and eight. Chris with his 35 footer. 12th hole, oh God. Another par four approaching 500 yards. Landing area off the tee is generous, but the approach must be precise given that the effective area of the green is small, even for Pinehurst standards. You get the feeling like Liz is on the attack. Sister Liz smooths one into the fairway. Brother Mark, cousin Mark. <laughs> Come on. Turn. Turn back around. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of pushing one right. Turn around. Every now and then I pull one left. It be like that, man. You do get the feeling like as we as we make our way into the twelfth hole that that's gotta feel good. There make a is. long putt and then roast one dead center. Beauty. Twenty second twirl. What was your favorite twirl though? Driver issue fix. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. It just felt good. It came off the middle of the face, straight down the pipe. I felt good. So this hole, hopefully. We can get par better. This hole should have played to my benefit, and I hit it dead straight down the right side, and it never turned, never did anything. So, I'll be in the waste bunker again, but I think I'm alive. That's the one good thing. I think I've only lost one ball, and that was the one that hit the tree and then bounced out. So, not hitting them too far left or right. Gotta keep it well, man. I think we just take something out over this bunker over here okay now you can go anywhere from 100 to 180. you know the caddy player relationship is a lot like hostage negotiation or trying to talk someone off a ledge you're basically trying to give them a reason to live and a reason to think intelligently i don't know about you guys but the closer i get to a hole with standing next to a golf ball the crazier i get just the more i just start to like I'm over here bargaining. All of a sudden, I think I got these shots in the bag that I've never pulled off. Any plans today after this? Yeah, I'll probably play a little golf. Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of the rest of the guys I normally do put that off. So usually okay. I get a money game, a couple money games, anything. Are you righty or lefty? I'm righty. Okay. All right, so I'll caddy for you after this. Yeah, that's so right. Give you some pointers and stuff. It's actually funny for our caddy tournament in January. We can bring in whoever we want. A lot of times we just bring in our buddies who have no clue what they're doing out here. Was that a dig? No, it's <laughs> Scotty Scheffler over here, Liz Breed. What's going on here? I mean, that looked really good. Was that good? I make one fing par. Hunter gave me some pretty good advice. If he was not here, I would have taken more of a direct approach and would have had to cover all of the waste bunker on the right side, whereas this, I've got a pretty wide open look. So, it pays having somebody with you that knows what they're doing. Great shot. I've probably walked maybe once or twice in the last 15 years. Yeah. So. You aren't used to it. it, does take a little bit of shot. Yeah. yeah. What do you think went wrong on that shot? I think you just got a little over the top of it. 
like standing up too much or? No, like when you're coming through, you basically got your club back here and your first move instead of dropping into the slot, going up over oh, the top. Oh, okay, gotcha. Then, it's off. hard for me to fake that motion being a righty, but. All right, so we got something. All right, something is all I need. Sometimes a quick um, tune up on the course can be really helpful. Other times it can just decide, make the round feel that much more confusing. I'd be curious to know what the next round is like for Chris and Mark and Liz. You know, where, where did they play next and did they, what, how did it change their games? Let's go. That's how you do it. I guess I can't pull off Tiger moves. I do know that we, we did a meetup and Chris wasn't there, but Mark was. And Liz got a hole in one, so there's... Chris wasn't there. He was there. What the fuck is wrong with me? I'm going to tell you some extra information that's unnecessary. That's also wrong. Yeah, it's too bad he couldn't make it. <laughs> I remember very distinctly all of us telling him goodbye and wishing he could have made it. <laughs> nope, he was there. I have a photo. Huh, <laughs> oh, okay. Mark from downtown? Maybe, maybe midtown. Cozy and up there. Look at how beautiful this place is. It's not a joke. Pinehurst is an incredible golf destination. You don't need to play number two from the tips. I would highly suggest play the appropriate yardage. Interesting, it doesn't turn at all. Two sixes and a five. The middle of the back half. On to the 13th hole. It's a shorty, folks. 235 yards. Could swear that's par three length. But uh, it still says par four there. And uh, it's an uphill approach. Unlike most Donald Ross greens, going long here is actually better than going up short. We got a big false front. What do I got to lose now, you know? Just try to put it on the green. Maybe uh, Albatross. All right, so we got 235, par four, drivable. I'm gonna just go for the green, try to sink it, get a hole in one, Albatross, make the whole round, you know? I gotta love it. Shoot 120, but pull in one on a par four, it's all worth it, right? Yeah, I think we're just gonna lay it up. Lay it up. There is no laying up. We're going for it, baby. Let's go. Well, y'all tell me how I'm hitting my driver today. 235. So it's like a 245 type shot with the uphill. Yeah. There you go. 235. I'm going driver. Why? Because it's fun to hit driver. So all of our players seem to be smelling blood or catch up. It's unclear. have 40 yards on any given hole, I guess. Yeah. Is he gonna ease off on this driver? I feel like he's got a lot. Hmm. Nice smooth swing, Mark. You got plenty to get it up there. Also try. Golf courses like this that kind of look like they're part of the environment. Right. You know, it looks like this just naturally occurs. Right, yeah. And that's that was the look they wanted to get back to. Yeah. Now it pretty much takes care of itself. You know? That's what it seems. Yeah. 
you know. Do you guys have to aerate and do all that stuff? With yeah. Them, yeah. Do Not as often. Right. So they put the little tiny, the like, tiny, I saw the little those. tiny holes in during seasons about once a month. But that yeah. does nothing to the ball. I mean, they don't sand it or yeah. anything like that. They only do like the big holes. I want to say maybe two years, give a couple years. And they don't do it like every year. See if I can pull a little Phil Mickelson out of me. Yeah, a little, little yeah. spatula 60. Great shot, Chris. Check, check, check. Yeah, let's go. Oh, that's her. That's it. There you go. Oh, that's it. Who hit that? Chris. Yeah, what the? Damn. Real good shot Oh, that's the trace that you just don't want to see. Good out, man. Promise of fight. He's this, not going I mean, down. That's the problem with the grounder. How are we feeling about a grounder that was like a gap wedge? Or like a grounder with like a pitching wedge? Landing it sprinkler head area. Yeah, yeah. To me, it might, uh, to me I think it's easier with the pitching thing. Okay. The same type shot you're you're describing. Um, I might go as far as 52, but I don't think I'd go a wedge or pitch. Yeah. I think it's too dicey on where your miss is. Can I go against you? Yeah, yeah, you can do. It's just yeah. 100 percent of the time. I like. I just felt really good about. No, that, yeah. You know. Just pick your spot where you want it to land. That's all it's going to come down to, okay? It's a good drive from Liz. She's got a safe little chip, and that is Ty D. Great play. Yeah, no, that's a good shot. No. No. Very good. Look at that. You got away with it. I got away with it. <laughs> you weren't happy with that contact, were you? I, honestly, I caught it a group then. There but you go. Again. I didn't want to say it that way. But. I didn't want to say it that way. Classy move. Mark on the edge all day. Par for Chris. Well played. Great chip. Great two putt. Ooh. It's a three, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a par. That's a birdie. Don't you tell me that you par. Birdie jar is open. Thank you. Just look at that. Is that your first birdie? Yeah, it was my first birdie. Is that the first birdie? Well, not the first birdie. Let me just say, I feel mentally, I feel like I've made about three. Does it reflect on the scorecard? No, but <laughs> like I felt like when I made that crazy up and down. That feels just as good as a birdie. It's birdie. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Love to see it. Back nine, shaping up, getting some gravity here. Liz gets a stroke back. 14th hole is something of an optical illusion. It appears longer and wider than it actually is. So figure that out on the tee box. The green is average in size for Pinehurst, but the putting area itself only makes up a third. Tricky, t teasy green. Oh, it's the old tees green. Donald Ross invented the tees green in 1890, meaning you can't get it. 
sometimes you want those back. Those putts, man, it's inches. The game of inches. That's all right, though. Finished par, though, so we'll take it. We'll take 14, it. let's see what happens on the 14th green here. Liz, far and away, wh wherever she's at in relation to par, she has a chance. It's a par 70. Uh, she can do this. Chris just drops a nut. Oh, is that turning right? He's a bit of a draw. The topography of this place and the fact that it looks like it's been here forever. It it's looks like, like a, a living, breathing thing. It really makes me think about like uh, ghosts, kind of, you know? Absolutely. Like, but like good golf, like historical, like vibe energy. Also, great drive. That's yeah. What is this? Wait. Matchstick. What? It's, it's a, a ghost. ghost. It's a ghost. Thomas is the funniest man I've ever seen in my life. Right. He caddied for Tiger Woods the year after his most, maybe besides 19, yeah. maybe his most memorable Augusta trip when he chipped it in and it hung on the lip and it was a Nike commercial. Yeah. He caddied for him like, what, a couple weeks like later. a couple weeks later. That's insane. Got the old seven wood out. Oh yeah, cuz. Oh yeah, up and sit. It's on the left. Yeah. Oh, that's on. Still there? Hey. That's on, buddy. Here we go. Call my caddy. I got these. Tell me what to do, and I do it. I exactly. one out of twenty <laughs> times. You <laughs> listen. More than you let on, at least. Great shot, Liz. I'm telling you, she's got a chance here. I'm hitting golf shots now. There you buddy. go. Nice shot. Back to back birdies? What do you think? That's <laughs> <laughs> ah, tough with the ball above your feet. I'll jump into the blame, the lie. I'll blame the lie every day. See, perfect lie, perfect shot. Give me a twirl. Great shot, Chris. Man, too much spin on that. Oh, this is the tea screen. He got teased. Dang, teasing me. That ain't the green. Don't hit it there. Safe shot, Chris. Sorry, Donald Ross made a tee screen. You hit the green. Many times people hit the green. But then the ball is not on the green. Sounds like a terrible, cosmic, twisted joke. I wonder if Donald Ross was into, like, leather. <laughs> oh, man. Tap in par at Pinehurst. I was like, yeah, that high was good play. Tell you what, learn, seeing what I know now about this, I, on Liz's birdie on the previous hole, I feel like Donald Ross, his like coffin just started to shake, you know? He was like, that's not it. 
Maybe the ghost of Donald Ross is what I felt when I was like, oh my God, Liz, if you make a birdie, the ghost of Donald Ross is going to haunt us for the next six months. Maybe that's why my life has been going so shit for the last six months. Because Liz made a birdie at Pinehurst. Final episode is coming up here tomorrow. Holes 15 to 18. Liz, the leader in the clubhouse, is heading into the 15th tee at merely 12 over. Chris at 31 over and Mark at 33 over. I wonder if they have a side bet. With Chris and Mark out of contention to break 90, Liz is the only hope. Get on the Liz train. Can she ride the birdie bus all the way into a 79? Stay tuned for the fourth and final episode of Breaking Pioneers, landing on your digital doorstep tomorrow.